1961 would mark the 12th year of coalition rule. After spending the entire 50s in opposition, Labour was determined to win. This time Labour was banking their money on a new face to win both swing voters as well as their old breakaway Democratic Labour Party peers. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Robert Menzies continued to dominate politics as Australia's longest serving Prime Minister. After the quick drop in the markets in 1958, the economy quickly recovered and Menzies was yet again riding on a strong economy. During this time period, the Menzies government would increase funding for university education grants including the establishment of a committee to oversee and make recommendations concerning higher education, undertake large development projects to improve the nation's capital as well as move several federal public services headquarters to Canberra from their respective state capitals as well as introduce schemes to make life-saving pharmaceutical products easier for people to access. Due to his relatively successful fifth term, Menzies looked relatively strong going into his 1961 re-election campaign. With a 32-seat advantage against the opposition, the Labour Party would need to take a different approach to this election. Realising that he was never going to beat Menzies, Labour leader H.V. Evatt would seek to retire from Parliament. In an attempt to make a dignified exit from Canberra, New South Wales Premier and close friend of Evatt, Bob Heffron would appoint Evatt to the position of Chief Justice of New South Wales, thus avoiding the need for Evatt to flat out resign. Unfortunately, Evatt's new appointment did not go over smoothly with the New South Wales Government. Heffron's Attorney General, Reg Downing, did not see Evatt fit to take the role of Chief Justice, citing his poor health as one of the many reasons, and would not move the nomination of Evatt despite being the Attorney General. Evatt, however, would get enough support from the New South Wales government and on the 15th of February 1960, he'd become Chief Justice of New South Wales. Despite gaining the role, Downing's concerns would be proven correct as Evatt would prove to be a poor Chief Justice and would retire only two years after taking the position. He would eventually pass away on the 2nd of November 1965 at the age of 71. At eight years and 241 days, Evatt would become the longest serving Labour leader to have never become Prime Minister. Ever would be succeeded by former Shifley Cabin Minister Arthur Corwell. Corwell was a Victorian who had joined Federal Parliament in 1940 and had served as the Minister for Information and Immigration while under Shifley, and then later as Deputy Leader under Evatt. Corwell's ascension to leader came as no surprise to anyone. However, his new replacement as Deputy would. Corwell wanted the experienced Eddie Ward as his deputy, but he would lose to some random young upstart politician by the name of Gough Whitlam. As a Roman Catholic, Corwell hoped to win back the support of the breakaway DLP members, who continued to gain strength across the eastern states of Australia. Upon taking the role of Labour leadership, he would immediately begin the early stages of discussion with the DLP to bring the two parties back together. However, by the time the 1961 election came around, the two parties remained divided and the DLP would continue to funnel votes to the coalition. For the first time what must have felt like years, Labour had several events turn out in their favour. The first was a small recession that hit the nation right around the election. This saw a small amount of public support swing away from the coalition and towards the Labour Party. The other was a shocking endorsement for the Labour Party from the Sydney Morning Herald, a newspaper company which had almost exclusively supported the coalition. With the positive turn of events, Corwell would push a strong campaign, hoping to finally topple the 12-year-old Menzies government. And with that, the election would occur on the 9th of December, 1961. And the winner was... Initially, it wasn't clear who had won. A substantial swing of 4.6% in the two-party preferred saw seat after seat across the country force the Labour Party, and it looked like Corwell might have finally succeeded in toppling the 12-year-old coalition government. Eventually, it came down to two seats, Bruce in Victoria, named in honour of our 6th Prime Minister, and Morton in Queensland. Bruce would narrowly be retained by future Liberal leader Billy Snedden, thanks in part due to DLP preferences, and the QLP voters would help James Killen retain Morton for the coalition. And thus, Menzies would retain 62 seats along with the Prime Ministership, despite for a third time losing the two-party preferred at 49.5, and you thought America was bad. Corwell would also end up with 62 seats, however the seats of the Northern and Capital Territories had limited voting power and did not count off Ward's forming government. They would later become full seats in 1966. Thus, Corwell had officially only won 60 seats. Despite the loss, Corwell had brought the Labour Party within striking distance again, and he would continue as leader of the Labour Party into the 60s to challenge the incumbent Liberal Coalition. Come back next time for the election of 1963.